Hello friends, this video on Organic Chemistry Basics Part 44 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let's talk about the differential extraction, the new, uh, a new method of purification of organic compound. Here, solids or liquid can be recovered from the aqueous solution. Please note from the aqueous solution by shaking in a separating fund using suitable organic solvent. So here also we need a solvent and here we are actually separating or recovering a organic compound recovering organic compound from aqueous solution. There is a solution organic solution plus water this is aqueous solution right and we want to recover the organic solution from an aqueous solution. We, we want to recover the organic compound from a aqueous solution. So to do this we use differential extraction. So here that basic requirement is the organic solvent which I am trying to uh, with the organic solvent which I will be using it should not be soluble in water but the organic compound should be soluble in solvent correct so that is I have a solvent right so this solvent should dissolve organic compound correct but this solvent should not dissolve in water correct so you see note note here this so, this organic compound should be dissolved in the solvent that should be there right so the solvent which we should, will pick that should be able to dissolve organic compound but this particular solvent should not dissolve in water correct correct see the organic compound which we have got generally will dissolve is this aqueous that means the organic compound will dissolve both in solvent and water correct but it will be more soluble in solvent than in water that is the logic but solvent and water they should not be soluble see this is my organic compound this should be soluble in water and this should be soluble in solvent also but should be should be more soluble in solvent Correct. And these two guys should not be soluble. Soluble in water. That is the logic. That is the whole logic, right? So I have organic compound which is soluble in water, and that's why it is aqueous, right? So I'm saying I'm recovering aqueous solution from the uh, water. I have an organic compound which is there in the water. I have to recover this guy from the water, right? This guy is the organic compound is saying, hey, recover me from water. I don't know water. So in that case, what we do is we just take a solvent and make sure that this organic guy is very happy with the solvent right so it should be soluble but the solvent since it is trying to save organic compound from water the solvent should not be soluble in water they are the enemy actually solvent and water they are enemy right so let's, let's start with the process so i have a this is my red one is the organic compound and this is my water right and that's why i talk about Aqueous organic compounds. I have aqueous organic compound. I have to recover this organic compound. So what we do is I put in the separating funnel. That is the first step. Then what we do is I put a solvent, and this is my solvent. Correct. This is my solvent now. Green color is my solvent. Organic solvent actually, and these are not soluble. They told organic compound and so the water and the solvent are not soluble. Correct. What next? Now what we'll do is. We'll shake this guy. We'll shake this guy a lot. We'll shake this guy a lot, right? So we'll shake this guy. So with this, what will happen is with this, after the shaking is done, right? We'll, we'll shake it a lot. We'll shake it a lot actually, right? Now what will happen is if you see, both get dissolved actually somehow, right? Somehow they get mixed. You see the color is a green and uh, because somehow they got only for some seconds, right? They they are somehow scattered, but they're not dissolved properly, but somehow scattered. Now you allow it to cool for some time. Now what will happen is water since it is heavy, it will come down. And now what will happen if you see the good part here is earlier my organic compound was stick to water. But now my organic compound is stick to solvent. Why? As I told my organic compound loves solvent more than water. And that's the kind of solvent I chose. See my organic compound was in water. It was in danger. It was crying. Help me. Help me. Right? Recover me. So to recover this from water, I need someone who is more close to this organic compound or who is more uh, uh, 
in good relation with the organic compound so i took a solvent such that in that solvent this organic compound is more soluble right so i have put the solvent here in some you no know, what do you call shake this uh, funnel separating funnel and i got something this kind of intermediate phase where i everything is in top and up and down position and i allow it to uh, settle for some time right allow it to settle for some time and then you see since my organic compound loves solvent more then water all the organic compound will go with solvent not all in fact most of them some of them if you see will still be with the water so with this if you see now i can remove the water easily right i just open this uh, tap and the water will go off and now what will happen is this solvent now if i have using distillation i can easily separate this solvent and this organic compound correct see i can not separate the solvent and organic compound directly from water so what i did was i use this differential extraction so instead of water and organic compound i created the scenario of solvent and organic compound correct and then i used distillation to separate this solvent from the organic compound and i get here pure organic compounds hope you understand this method right and the crux here is the solvent which i choose the solvent is not soluble in water but it is highly soluble in the organic solvent correct soluble is not soluble in water but highly soluble in the organic compound let's talk about the fractional distillation so in fractional distillation we try to purify mixtures which has different boiling point so for example i have this guy which has three mixtures a b and c a has a boiling point of let's suppose 100 kelvin b is 150 kelvin and c is 200 kelvin let's suppose so what we do here also here we also we boil it right now here we have again we have fractionating column to purify right as i told so for example here you have um, all a b and c now when you heat at 100 degrees celsius right you may be have 80% of a let's suppose 10% of b and 10% of c also okay now we have fractionating column what is fractionating column it's a long tube with a obstruction to the passage of vapor upward and to the liquid downward so vapor can't go upward easily and liquid can't come downward easily correct so as you see there's a vapor rise in this fractionating column they condense partially because the obstruction there's a vapor here it obstructed and with the cooling effect it cooled down so what happened is this 80% a and b maybe somewhere it will be 90% a 5% b and 5% c and somewhere here you will get 100% correct because i told fractionating column serves as a repeated distillation because here if you see again it is getting cooled down again it is in the liquid stage coming down so the one which gets cooled down here will be more of b and c because b and c will cool down easily a will not get cooled down easily because the temperature here is almost 100 Let's suppose I'm heating at hundred ten here. Correct, almost hundred. So A will not cool down, but B and C will cool down. So whatever B and C by chance went up, it will cool down. Correct. See, because as I told, I'm heating in hundred ten. Maybe that some percent of B and C also went up, right? So if we don't have fractionating column here, also we have eighty percent A, ten percent B, ten percent C. So with the fractionating column, B and C cools down, and we have hundred percent pure A, and you collect A, right? Once you now you increase the temperature to let's suppose 160 Kelvin, A is gone. Now you have B and C. So with this at 160 only, most of the B will go. Some C will go, but fractionating column will stop it. So you'll get pure C here, B here. So you change the funnel. Uh, sorry, you change this vessel here and you collect, put a new vessel and collect B here. And then you again whatever remaining is C, or you can again, if, let's suppose that it has some impurity also, you can again heat it to 210 Kelvin. So you will find C here. So that's how you purify or you separate uh, mixtures with different boiling points using fractional distillation. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, 
get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.